Hello, my name is Minsu Kim from Seoul National University. And today I'm going to talk about um, solving register allocation problem using deep reinforcement learning. Register allocation problem is to find the best allocation of physical registers to program variables. Um, it has been a significant problem in code generation due to its um, impact on the code quality. We shouldn't allocate the same registers to interfering variables while minimizing their spill costs. The traditional approach to this is graph coloring. Specifically, from the control flow graph, we can build the interference graph to which we can apply the vertex coloring problem. That said, here we are trying to um, follow the rule where we have to color the vertices with different colors if they are adjacent. This method can handle um, interference perfectly, but um, some complex hardware requires more constraints to be expressed. Um, for the expressiveness, um, the PBQP has been introduced, which is a general case of graph coloring. In addition to graph coloring problem, they have cos vectors um, for each um, vertex and cos matrix for each edge. They represent the intricate constraints for each combination of coloring. The goal of PBQP is to minimize the cos function f given such a PBQP graph with complex costs. Um, selection vectors here x um, actually indicates coloring decisions. For example, with these um, instances um, of x vectors, the cos vector becomes the sum of the highlighted numbers. Um, another instance of x vectors may lead to a different value of the cos function, and the PBQP would like to find the best combination of the x vectors. This problem is MP hard, so some efficient heuristics has been devised and reported. And in this talk, we take a deep learning approach to solve this problem. To overview after the introduction for explaining the overall concepts, I will go into details of the system followed by experiment and conclusion. To start with, um, reinforcement learning is usually defined on MDP. That is the problem has action, reward and state. Um, the concept of our, of our approach is to view the PBQP problem as a game, which is also an MDP. In this game, the player alone wants to allocate colors to the given graph to minimize the cost function. So um, it definitely can be views, viewed as a single player game and a turn-based game of which um, we will define its action, reward, and state more accurately. First, um, an action can be defined to decide one color for um, the vertex with the lowest number remaining uncolored in the graph. Therefore, if the number of colors allowed are only two, um, which are denoted by one for green and two for red, the action A can be either one or two. In this example, if the agent take an action number two, it means that um, the agent is coloring the vertex number one um, with color red. Next, to define rewards for a single player game, we have to somehow measure the performance of an agent. Because we have defined action as coloring one vertex, um, it always takes n actions to color all the vertices when the graph has n vertices. So after n actions, we can always calculate the cos function f, um, define the uh, PBQP problem, and take it as its score. And then we can compare the score with a previously best agent score so that we can judge if the current agent is doing better or not. If it did better, it gets a positive reward and otherwise it gets a negative reward. Finally, we can define the state as the graph itself at each time step. 
but um, with a little modification. Say if the agent took the action two at the previous state, state and then um, the next state would be illustrated like this with some of vertices colored and others not colored. So um, we transitioned this partially colored, colored graph to uncolored graph by removing the colored vertices from the graph while maintaining the same properties of the coasts by propagating the coast to the agent adjacent vertices. By doing so, in the PBQP point of view, the optimal solution to graph G0 and G1 is always the same by definition. But we have obtained the clean, uncolored new graph G1, which helps us um, reduce the number of required parameters. Um, to summarize, we can view the PBQP as a um, single player turn-based game um, by defining um, its state, action, and rewards. So we can um, apply the same mechanism used in Alpha Zero, which was reported very effective to solve complex problems like the game of Go, chess, and Shogi. We use the planning algorithm called um, MCTS, as in Alpha Zero, which can be trained from numerous self-plays. Overall, one self-play includes generating a random PPQP graph, which um, the graph manager takes and colors vertices one by one. Um, the graph manager uses MCTS internally to decide each coloring. MCTS is a planning algorithm which performs simulations k times, meaning it tries many possible options by planning ahead and building the game tree um, that includes promising future states. To efficiently find um, the promising options, they use the neural networks um, that predict how promising each action would be, um, which is denoted by uh, as p hat and um, how good the current state is denoted by V hat. After the game is over, when all the vertices are colored, we can grant um, the reward and find all the actual P value and V value, which, can we, which we can use to calculate the loss. Um, that means how much the neural nets were wrong so that um, they can learn by the gradi gradient descent algorithm. Um, by learning bit by bit, um, they can do better as it experiences um, more episodes. I will explain the episode um, with a concrete example. First, a random graph is generated as G0. Um, then the graph manager takes it. Um, and the, um, the graph manager asks the MCTS about um, what color to choose for the vertex number one. If, um, if the MCTS returns the action number two, the graph manager accordingly color the vertex um, with the color red. Then it reduces the graph by um, removing the colored vertex um, because we have propagated um, the related codes to the adjacent vertices correctly the um, optimal solutions to G0 and G1 are identical. Then this process is repeated until all the vertices are colored. Finally, we evaluate um, the, the reward by competing with the previous version and um, comparing the PBQP coast functions, then um, we can decide um, if the current agent is doing better or not. Then um, we can finally identify what went wrong or right, um, summarized as the loss, which will be used to train the neural networks that the MCTS is relying on. I'll also explain how MCTX works, works with a concrete example. When the um, MGTS encounters a new state, which was never evaluated before, the neural nets predict two things about the current state. The first one 
um, is called um, a scalar value um, v hat, which indicates the prediction of um, the expected reward. And the second one is the um, vector p hat, which indicates the probability of the actions for the given state based on the previous experiences, meaning um, how probable an action would be taken in the current state. Current state. Then it selects um, the action with the highest p hat value. Uh, in this case, it will be the red action. Then it will generate a new state, which is also um, fed to the um, neural nets to predict v hat and p hat because it's a new state encountered. This new information um, is recorded in the tree form by expanding the tree where um, a state is mapped to a node and an action is mapped to an edge. So therefore, um, in this, uh, by, by this number of um, simulations, um, it's gonna build uh, the partial game tree. Then this new information um, about the children nodes is stored back up so that more and more information gets um, accumulated to the Q value along the path. This process is repeated K times um, appending K new nodes uh, in the children um, tree, making the Q value more accurate as it runs more simulations. And it has more ground to judge on. Now, um, we'll go through the detailed structure of the neural net, which takes um, a PBQP graph as, um, as, uh, as a board state and returns P hat and V hat. Because um, typical deep neural networks require the input tensors to be in the fixed size, we need some ways to embed um, the input graph. Here, um, we use graph convolutional network, which is a nested and layered network based on the message passing algorithm. There had to be a little modification because PBQP um, graphs had edge costs that um, could be handled by multiplying to the um, message pass to, through the corresponding edge, like um, this. This shows the overall architecture of the neural net. This part um, illustrates the great graph embedding part um, that, was, um, that was mentioned uh, earlier. Um, and it, it produces the embedded vector mu. This is fed into the um, standard ResNet res um, with two different end layers. To generate p hat, it is connected to the fully connected layers and the softmax function, while to generate generate v hat, it is connected to the hyperbolic tangent function for regression. And finally, um, we want to talk about the coloring order and backtracking. Uh, it is also important to um, decide what um, vertices to color first, because um, we defined um, a new term called liberty by um, the number of options for um, each vertex um, that it can be, uh, that it can take. So there, if there's less liberty, there are only a few um, options that it can take. So it's much more difficult to color. So um, we'll, I, uh, do the experiment um, with uh, a random order and decreasing liberty order and increasing liberty order. And about the backtracking, uh, we allow the agent to take back actions as much as it wants. Usually like the, um, the games in the game of Go, they're not allowed to um, take back actions after um, the opponent has played. So, um, but in, in this PBQP game, it's a um, solo player game. So uh, we allowed um, the taking back actions as much as once. It, is, it was um, particularly effective for problems that um, need just a valid solution, meaning 
um, if it can find a, a one solution, it is very um, effective because um, in, uh, in the target hardware um, called ATE, um, as we have experimented, um, there are only um, zero costs or infinity cost. So it was very, um, ex there are very two extreme um, consequences if the simulation went wrong. We have set up the experiments as below. Um, the, we trained the neural networks by playing a number of iterations, each of which consists of a um, hundred uh, episodes while collecting up to 200,000 training examples. Um, we also um, have a, a number of different K parameters, which is the number of simulations for one MCTS call. And um, we have um, maintained two different K values for um, the training process and inference process. This chart shows the number of nodes in the posture game tree for different config configurations, A, B, C, and D. So um, it means if the tree is bigger, that also means that it had to simulate more things to find the valid answer. Um, so the bigger tree size means less efficient. So if we want, um, if we can find the um, solution with a um, smaller time, it means the tree size was also smaller. So, um, and the red X markers on top of the bars mean that um, it failed to find the value solution. Therefore, it will be the worst outcome that should be avoided. Um, when you compare A and B, you can see by simply adding um, backtracking algorithm, you can find a value solution for all the cases, even with a smaller K value. And um, this method suits our problem particularly well because we only had to find um, one valid solution and the prediction quality of neural networks um, was not perfect. When you compare B, C, and D, you can see it's um, the most efficient to use the order of decreasing liberty, um, implying that coloring order directly affects the tree size. This is specifically because the um, vertices with smaller liberty should be treated with much more care. And by the nature of the MCTS, where later decisions get more and more accurate. Um, to conclude, um, it, um, it, it was the first LR based register allocation work, especially for um, register allocation of irregular architecture like ATE. Um, and it shows a competitive performance to um, existing well-tuned heuristics as um, the experiment shows. And we believe that there's much room for enhancing the quality of the neural net model. So um, we, we're believing that um, there can be uh, a huge um, enhancement as well. And it has showed um, uh, promising aspects in the area where a complex optimization problem is also coexistence. For example, um, we might try solving instruction scheduling and register allocation at the same time. And um, it has been known that um, they're, um, they're entangled together and it's very complicated if you have to like consider both problems at the same time. So as long as we can define the optimization problems as an MDP, as, um, as we did in, in this talk, um, we can, um, we can um, challenge the problems um, using the same architecture and um, approach. 
Um, well, that's it for um, this talk. And thank you very much for uh, listening.